Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Angels. Hope you enjoyed the new intro that, unlike the first one, was not made in PowerPoint. So today's video actually sprung out of my own curiosity. Um, I had my case and I had the closed loop cooler on my GPU and my CPU, and I was wondering which fan configuration would give me the, the lowest temperatures overall. For today's testing, I used my system with the i7-6850K and the Titan X overclocked to 2100MHz and 4.489GHz on the CPU. To get everything nice and hot, I used ADA64 to, to, to stress the GPU and the CPU at the same time, and then after 15 minutes, I used MSI Afterburner to see what the max temperatures were. I didn't go in any specific order, I just did whichever way was easiest to move the fans and move on to the next setup. You'll have to excuse me if I'm looking down, I'm having to read from a tablet, because there's, just with two radiators and three fans, there's actually quite a bit of different combinations for you to tr that you can try, uh, and most of them give different, uh, uh, different temperatures. Now remember, this case only has one air slot in the bottom, uh, no place to mount a fan, and then you have a, uh, uh, either, either a single, uh, what was it, a, um, a single 480 at the top, or uh, uh, a 360 with a standard 120 or 140, I believe, yeah, a 120 or 140 in the rear. I have a uh, 280, what did I say, 480, I mean, 280 uh, millimeter radiator in the top, and then I have a 120 for the GPU in the back. Unfortunately, I don't have it in my system anymore. The, uh, uh, the EVGA cooler that I had, the pump whined too much, and I can't really trade it in because I modded it because it's only the 1070, 1080 closed loop cooler that I modified to fit the Titan X. I don't know if they make, I believe they make one now. Um, but anyway, um, can't send it back and it was just too noisy so I just went back to the reference card. The first configuration I tried was with the CPU fans all pulling in and the uh, GPU fan pushing out of the back of the case. The CPU reached 68 degrees Celsius and the GPU reached 65. Giving us an average temperature of 66.5. The next one I tried was all the fans pushing into the case. So that means all the fans into the case and only pushing it out the bottom. It gave me 66 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 65 on the GPU. So 65.5 average. It's not too bad for this case. The only problem is, is when all the fans are pushing in on this case, the actual case gets hot. Um, you can actually feel the, 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 uh, the temperature of the aluminum face actually it, it gets warm to the touch. Next, I did the CPU fans pulling air out of the case while the GPU was pushing air in. This did not do too well for the CPU. The GPU stayed at 60C, which is pretty good, and the CPU reached 76 degrees Celsius because all that heat, all that hot air is going straight from the uh, GPU and then just going right out the CPU. This one didn't fare so well in the average department. It averaged 68 degrees Celsius. With all three fans pulling air out of the case, the GPU peaked at 66 degrees Celsius and the CPU at 72, racking up an average of 69 degrees. With the CPU fans pulling inward, it kept the CPU at 66 degrees Celsius and the GPU reached 62 degrees Celsius in this test with the fan pushing out with an average of 64 degrees Celsius. The best so far in any of the tests. In this next one, the CPU got a toasty 78 degrees Celsius with all of its fans pushing out, but the GPU stayed 60 degrees Celsius with its fan pulling air into the case. But due to the high CPU temperatures, it only mustered an average of 69C, so tied for the worst so far. And finally, all fans pushing in actually produce the same numbers as all pulling in. Surprise, surprise. With 65 degrees on the GPU and 66 on the CPU, it averaged 65.5. So in conclusion, I'm not trying to uh, uh, discuss the thermals of my case in particular, but show that different fan configurations can give you wildly different uh, temperatures in your devices. With uh, uh, GPU closed loop coolers becoming more commonplace, and if you're overclocking, you got to keep them as low as you can. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.